to Wellness Wednesday. On behalf of the Centers for Integrative Medicine and Health and Trinity Health of New England, I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode. Wellness Wednesday is designed to bring, in brief format, tools for wellness that will benefit our colleagues and our communities at large. This week, we're talking about an issue that has been very common over this past year, sleeplessness or insomnia. And in order to address this issue, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of sleep, what sleep should look like, and then what we can do to make sure that ours is better. I would like to um, show you, share my screen, and show you some information that I think might help you understand natural sleep architecture, and we'll see if we can help you improve your sleep. So let's just begin with what sleep should look like. So we begin and we're alert, and we get into bed and we begin to rest, and we start to go down into just a light layer of sleep. And so this level of sleep, you're easily, you can wake up easily, you're cognitively still all there with the, with the awake world, you're not in the sleep world yet. But through the first 30 to 60 minutes of sleep, we gradually deepen to the point when we are in very, very, very deep stage four sleep. And in this stage, we don't move a whole lot, we um, begin to repair and fix all of the challenges that we had during the day. And this is the part where when you wake up, you're not quite with the awake world because you're in such deep sleep. So over the first 60 minutes, this happens. And then over the next 30 minutes, we gradually enter lighter stages of sleep and then finally into REM or rapid eye movement sleep. This level of sleep is so fascinating. We're not exactly sure what we do during this phase of sleep, but we do know that we're paralyzed so that we don't injure ourselves. This is where we dream, and we believe that dreaming is important because it takes all of the information that we've learned during the day and puts it in the right place in our memories and organizes our thoughts. Over the next 30 to 60 minutes again, so at about two and a half hours of sleep, we're back down into this very deep stage four sleep, and then we cycle back up again throughout the night. As you look, this is over eight hours of sleep. And you can see that in the first five hours, we hit these very, very deep levels of sleep that are incredibly important for us for healing, for um, reduction of inflammation, for us to process all that happens in our day. And so if we're not giving at least five hours of sleep, it is a problem over the longer term. Now, how we typically approach insomnia is we think about the causes of insomnia, worry, and stress, anxiety and uh, pain and, and all sorts of disability, and we know that causes insomnia. And so we want to increase how much we are sleepy. We want to increase sleepiness. And how do we do that typically? We use medications. We use supplements. We use sleep restriction. We only go to bed when we're completely exhausted, or we use herbs. So this is the traditional way to look at fixing the problem of lack of sleep. But I want you to think about perhaps this in a little bit different way. What if instead of increasing how sleepy we are, instead we work to reduce, reduce how wakeful we are? So decrease wakefulness instead of increasing sleepiness. And how do we do this? Well, we can do it with cognitive behavioral therapy. We can do it with stress reduction. We can do it with breath work. And we can also do it with progressive muscle relaxation. In really excellent studies, this approach, although it takes slightly longer than using medication, is actually way more effective over the long term. The other nice thing about this approach is that it actually works on what you want it to work on, which is the source of your lack of sleep, which is worry or stress or anxiety. And so as we think about how do we do this, I want to introduce to you the noise reduction approach to sleeplessness. And over the next three weeks, we're going to address a number of these issues. So let's think about you're having a stressful week at work and or at home, and it's incredibly busy. And I don't know, maybe we're in a pandemic. And in order to adapt, to meet your deadlines, to do what you need to do, you have an extra cup of coffee. Then because you're so busy, you don't get out for your regular walk or your regular run, so your exercise goes down. And then, again, because you're so busy, you order out 
and you get tacos for dinner, and they happen to be spicy, which then causes you to have a little stomach upset. This is the perfect storm. This is a perfect way to cause sleeplessness. A little extra caffeine, lots of worry, lack of exercise, and foods that may irritate your stomach. And so in order to address the, this insomnia from the way that we just discussed, we need to talk about bed noise. So noise, in quotation marks, disruptions in the bedroom that might cause us to not be able to sleep. We have to look at body noise, things like pain, um, uncontrolled blood pressure or diabetes, um, any other aches, pains, or conditions that might get you up in the middle of the night. And then we need to look at mind noise, things that roll around in our heads, things that wake us up at 3 o'clock in the morning that we worry about. And so this week, we're going to begin with bed noise. And there are a number of things that we can address to get this one-third of the uh, integrative medicine approach to sleeplessness started. So bed noise means any kind of disruption in the room in which you sleep. We need to make sure that we can limit those and calm them down to give us the best chance of sleeping. Anyone who's ever tried to put a two-year-old to bed knows you cannot make them sleep. We don't usually use medications in children, certainly, but you can facilitate sleep by making sure that they're warm and dry and fed and it's quiet. And so think about how you might do that for yourself. First of all, a dark room. Light tells our brains that we should be awake, and so it disrupts sleep. The temperature should be cool, not cold, not roasting, around 68 degrees. Bedside clocks are a big disruptor. Not only is the light from disrupting from a clock, very disruptive, but the whole idea of waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning and knowing you're up at 3 o'clock in the morning and knowing you have a lot to do the next day is incredibly disruptive. So turn off your clock, turn it around, set an alarm so that you get up at the right time, but otherwise don't check the time when you wake up. The bedroom should also be a work-free zone, should be used for sleep and sex only. Don't, and also stop watching TV, using the computer, or reading in the bedroom. Although a lot of people find that these um, activities facilitate sleep, if you're having difficulty sleeping, I'm going to encourage you to think about eliminating them at least for two weeks. And that's the beauty. If you follow this protocol for two weeks, most people will regain better sleep. Maybe not perfect sleep. I'm not sure we, any of us have perfect sleep, but at least better sleep than you had when you weren't um, attending to bed noise. So watching TV, using the computer, reading in the bedroom, makes our brains think we should be awake, and we should limit those at least for two weeks. A hard one, no pets in the bed. I know a lot of people sleep with their animals. I have nothing against it unless you're having difficulty sleeping. And then you have another living being in the room who could be jingling a collar or rolling over or, or waking you up. And for two weeks, think about um, minimizing that distraction. We talked a little bit already about spending at least five hours in bed, dedicating at least five hours, I'm going to recommend at least six to seven, particularly if you're having difficulty sleeping. And then there's um, a, a thing called off-gassing that can happen with new blankets, new mattresses, new pillows, new carpet, and it's that industrial chemical smell that comes out of these new products. Those can be very disruptive for some people as they're trying to get to sleep, so think about that, too, as it may be um, contributing to the problem, and perhaps moving that new product to another room, allowing it to um, off-gas on its own so it's not disrupting your sleep. And so next week, on our next Wellness Wednesday, we will be addressing mind noise, another one-third of the integrative approach to uh, sleeplessness and insomnia. Thanks for your attention. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.